I finally get to try an ESP. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, ESP, electric sound products. These guys have completely transformed guitar making since their humble beginnings. We've reviewed some of their less expensive guitars within the LTD series, like that Evertune SG style guitar, and a few other ones from our previous Trey Tuesday series. But we are reviewing the Big Mac Daddy today, an ESP custom shop James Hetfield guitar. When I first saw this case, I thought it was going to be like a really cheesy painted on camo, but no, that's a woven material. That's great. And of course, we've got our ESP branding. Looks like some sort of a wild animal took some bites out of our handle, but let's go ahead and crack open my first ESP. Oh no, we've got white in the way. Get out of the way. It's a camo explorer known as a snake bite within ESP's terminology. If I understand the lore behind these things correctly, they first came out around 2011, the whole snake bite shape, and it was Hetfield's new take on an explorer. So he's changed up some of our contours here. Like we've got a little bit of a whoopity woo, and then we've got like some sort of an arrowhead design up here. And then we've also got that on our headstock. It almost reminds me of like an eagle's beak. And then I was looking at the stock photos. You can kind of see there's an area right here where it starts to swoop down. I thought that was going to be a lot more exaggerated in person, but it's like hardly even there. So essentially Hetfield's take on an Explorer with some modernized appointments. But check out our cool mother of pearl snake on our fretboard. That's looking pretty nice. But this just isn't any camo. This is Kuyu camo. I had to look it up. Apparently it's a really high-end camo store that has their own unique design. And as far as camo designs go, it looks like it would work pretty good. Would you look at that? We've actually got the branding of the store on the back of the headstock and locking Spurzel tuners. It's a really nice slick satin finish all over. Um, it just kind of feels like a slightly misshapen Explorer. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. We'll have to see how it feels on a strap. But we've got his signature EMGs in here, so hopefully we can do some Metallica today. That's always good. But in case you're not familiar with who Hetfield is, he's the front man of Metallica, the singer and rhythm guitar player. And I'm not usually into the whole big chasing celebrity thing, but James Hetfield, I would not mind meeting him one day. He's a cool guy. But James started to use ESP style guitars all the way in the mid to late 80s. Doing some research online, I heard like 86, 87. And he's had many of signatures with them, such as the snake bite that we're reviewing today. There's a Les Paul style one called the Truckster. There's the J h1 which is more of a flying v and then kirk also has a whole bunch of different signatures we can't really cover all of them because i'm not the right guy to teach you about that but this new one was released january 2022 and apparently it's taken some dealers well over a year just to get these things in stock because production has been slow which was the case for many new guitars but the esp version will run you seven thousand two hundred ninety nine dollars which is very expensive but don't worry there's also an ltd version esp's cheaper brand will run you 1899 and currently in production for slightly less money there's also a snow white version as well as a black satin and i'm sure there's been other colors throughout the years but a portion of the proceeds actually goes to metallica's charity all within my hands awmh but sadly, most of his signature guitars have just never really spoken to me. As a Les Paul guy, I've always wanted a replica of the Iron Cross. And maybe one day we'll get it, because we almost got it, there were prototypes made, and then Gibson messed up at that point in time. But now that we've got new management, Kirk Hammett's already on board, I'm really hopeful that one day we can review it. The reason why we're documenting this one today is due to a new Guitar Day purchase. Once again, a big thank you goes out to him. It's the same guy who brought us the Greeny review, the Leo Scala Flying V, and the person who gifted me the most awesome Les Paul trophy you've ever did done see. <laughs> but outside the guitar and the cool case, what else did we get? Looks like we got a cool ESP shirt. Not sure if that was a dealer exclusive thing or if they all come with that. We've got a big old COA. Comes with a fret guard. It's shipped with that. That way you don't get any impressions on your frets as it ships from Japan. Our switch tip packs separately so it doesn't splinter into a million pieces. Our truss rod tool and Schaller counterparts. And some James Hetfield picks. And mine has an extra pair of elixir strings. <laughs> That's a bonus. These are expensive. To learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. Inside our snake bite, let's check it out. As far as our pickups, obviously it's the signature EMG headset. These are active pickups, so they're gonna really be punching your amp, which is perfect for playing Metallica. They are on a quick connect system, so if you wanted to try a different EMG set in here at one point in time, it'd be real easy to do, no soldering required. The outside of the pickups are pretty cool too. They still have the 
pole piece looking part of it. That way it still looks closer to a regular humbucker, but no, they're active. And of course you've got EMG's branding and they're a black chrome. Now we can't get our readings like we normally do from the pickups because they're active. Makes my meter go crazy. Here's a look inside our neck pickup cavity. You can see our long neck tenon, as well as our grounding screw connecting it to our shielding paint. And here's what our bridge pickup cavity looks like. They've got another one of those in there. As far as our bridge and tailpiece, these are a locking variety. So that means you have a set screw right here that once you tighten it down, these will not leave the guitar. Helpful for string changes. They don't have to worry about those things falling off. And it helps keep your setup rock solid. Say you need to clean your guitar, you're not accidentally spinning these wheels. But what is unique about this guitar is the fact that it does not have a tone control. It's two volumes. So you've got your neck volume and your bridge volume. And a three-way toggle switch for neck, bridge, and middle. We were talking about the contours earlier. There is a little bit of a comfort swoop right here. Maybe it's just more so a stylistic one, or I guess explorers are kind of blocky. That just kind of makes it so it rests against you, maybe a little bit softer. You don't have as much of a profile. And then seriously, looking at photos, I, I thought this would be really exaggerated, but it's very soft. You hardly even notice it even while playing, but that's just to give you a slightly more ergonomic spot where you're resting your arm. It works. And then our strap button is right here, which apparently these are ESP strap locks. My shawlers did fit with enough convincing though. There are other ones at the base of the heel. Since they've got this cutaway right here, it works really well because it makes the strap kind of hug the back of the guitar. And if you notice, there's no pick guard on this style explorer. And our toggle switch isn't up here. That's purely for cosmetics at this point. This is a mahogany body, and it has a one-piece mahogany neck with a ebony fretboard. Now there's dots along this ebony board. I've seen that before. I don't even know exactly what causes that, but it's so nice and smooth. They definitely take the time to super sand this down. I mean, this almost feels like it has a satin finish over top. I always get a lot of comments on my videos saying, ah, oh, Gibson needs to do better. ESP knocks them out of the park. I guess I can kind of understand if you like this super finely sanded feel. But for me, it's all about the fretwork. Work. Look at how nice and rounded over those fret edges are. And in general, I just like how shiny the frets are. I've recently gotten to be a big appreciator of highly polished frets because they just feel so nice when you're doing bends and vibrato. And this snake guy kind of looks like a treble clef. I wonder if he meant to do that. I don't know a lot about his snake bite design. But we have a 12 inch fretboard radius, a 24 3 quarter inch scale, with a bone nut measuring 1.68 inches, which increases to 2.05 by the 12th, a thin U neck shape profile measuring 0.84 first fret neck depth, and it chunks up a little bit to 9 by the 12th. It is a nice and rounded neck. I honestly did not notice how thin it was. It's definitely not like a shredder D shape. It's got a little bit of a profile, but it's not super chunky by any means. Here's a look at that neck profile, first fret and 12th fret. It's more of a bigger U in the cording area, and then it flattens out just a little bit, but yet yeah, still pretty rounded. So far, the only thing I really have issues on this guitar with it was the truss rod cover. So if you go to the B-roll shots and you notice it looks kind of janky around the JH, it's because they had a protective film plastic over it, but it looks like they route this thing with that in place. So you can't just take it off in one fell swoop. It's like segmented into four different pieces and some of it doesn't come off. And then we've got residue left in other areas. I guess if there was one thing I could complain about on this guitar, it was that nonsense. There's what our truss rod looks like, and that is a raised ESP logo. I'm not sure if the LTDs have that or not. It appears to be made out of metal or something. And these are locking Spurzel tuners, so everything's locking on this thing. Moving on to the back here, there's some interesting things I've never seen before. Like, look at this. This is your battery door for your active electronics. Your guitar is not going to work without it. A bad one has your battery just stuffed inside your cavity. A good one has some sort of plastic hinge thing that's still a big pain in the butt to use. But I've never seen a metal compartment that you push and it flips like a trap door and then you can easily get it and then when you're done, you put it back. That's pretty slick, ESP. I like that. As far as our electronics, it's just your typical. EMG stuff in here, all quick connect. Here's what our back plate looks like. There you can see our inspection sign off, and then the back has some shielding. I found this rather odd. Two of the screws were long, one of them was extra short. I'm not sure if that's normal, but that's the short one that was pulled for you. And there's our output jack. 
and the strap button we were looking at earlier with our other one at the base of the heel. I'm kind of surprised to see that he doesn't want a comfort cut or something back here. He must like the blockiness of explorers. I do too. But I really like the look of this. It's like you're looking at a lefty snake bite, but you can't see the pickups and strings. I was kind of surprised to see that they didn't do any type of like a swooped heel or anything. Well, I guess he's more of a rhythm player. I mean, that doesn't mean he doesn't rip out a solo here or there. Now that's just a pretty standard heel design. All camoed up here. We do have a volute on the back and we've got our Kuyu branding. I was actually kind of shocked to see that, but I guess it makes sense if it's a specific kind. And there's the backside of our Spurs locking tuners. And I found this weird. Our Made in Japan is on a sticker. I'm not sure if that's just protecting it or if you could just remove that similar to a Made in China sticker on an Epiphone. All said and done, not a bad weight, eight and a half pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in and kind of hear how it sounds. Trust me, I don't have the right amp for this guitar. definitely got that whole active EMG sound to it. They're really punchy and aggressive. If you're just trying to play normal clean, it will rip your amp apart. That's the clean channel. <laughs> That's why most of this demo, I just had that rolled down to like a seven. play the clean tones and I was picking lightly. But with being a dual volume pickup guitar, it's kind of interesting for your middle position because you can play with that more. Have full on bridge, half neck. Or the other way. Let's have some fun.
Now that we know all about the James Hetfield signature ESP snakebite camo, what are my final thoughts? I can honestly say this guitar is not for me, but thank you so much, David, for giving us the opportunity to document it on the show because I've always wanted to give a James Hetfield signature a try. EMG pickups are incredibly powerful. I would definitely need to completely overhaul my amp selections to really make good use out of this because I'm set up for like some good classic rock stuff right now, not necessarily the hard punching of Metallica. But you can definitely tame his signature set down if you need to. It was very interesting to have a dual volume control guitar rather than having a tone anywhere, but I don't really use the tone knob too much, so I guess I can understand from his standpoint why he wouldn't necessarily care. But it's an incredibly smooth feeling guitar. I mean, the satin finish, yes, but I'm talking like the fretboard. ESP does do a great job at rounding those fret ends and making the board itself almost seem too smooth in some situations. But it's cool to see our mother of pearl snake bite here. So, Troglodytes, everybody say thank you, David, in the comments section, and uh, hopefully he'll buy some more cool guitars for us to check out in the future. Enjoy your new knowledge, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.